so. Oh, you can't see anything? Okay, cool. Even better. How about that? Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, fun stuff I've been playing with today is grading the Web of Trust assignment. This was a, is an 155 megabyte PNG file that was made from all of these signatures that you all made on not just the 120 of you that participated, but that and all the adversarial keys as well. Uh, this actually took like an hour to uh, build on this computer, and it's crashed this a few times. It didn't crash Safari. I tried to open it up in Safari, and Safari said, oh, reloading this page because it's using a lot of memory. It should be doing that. So uh, you can see like all the interconnections here, which is pretty cool. I think this has names, so I won't post this, but I'll probably try to figure out how to redact the names on here, because I think this would be something cool to, to share out there. And now you, you're seeing this, so I have no idea what this means. I'm pretty sure this is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the computer saying, please kill me. <laughs> it has eight gigs of memory. Like, what more does it want? Or 16, even. I don't even know. It's got, it's got a lot. It's like a weird blue screen of death inside of this preview. And it's not even like a reload because my screen went all blue for some reason. OK. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then, so I found some interesting stuff out. Uh, so I looked, so OK, full disclosure, I um, just wrote this code this morning. I'm not 100% certain that it's actually correct. This actually was a real pain to try to count and go through all the signatures on all the keys and figure out, OK, this key ID that signed it maps to this uh, fingerprint, which means it's this person's adversarial, which means I need to increment a counter of how many their adversarial signed, whatever. But uh, that's not really your problem. That's my problem. But uh, that just means take these with a grain of salt. So that's not useful. Oh, I think I need to reverse it. Uh, yeah, so this is actually super interesting. So this is the list of. Not, so there's no people actually don't even know who this is, but these, I think these are the total counts of valid real signatures on their adversarial keys. So, uh, so this is real keys that signed it. So obviously if you sign adversarial key with adversarial key, that shouldn't count, that doesn't make any sense, right? You're trying to trick real people. So some super interesting things from here, we have this insane distribution where one person had 40 signatures from real people. That's cool. Um, let's see, 18, 16, 15. You can see it kind of drops off 5, 30, 2, and 1. So the other thing is that 1, 2, 3, 4. There's only 8 people. So only 8 people are actually able to trick other people to sign their adversarial keys, which I think is kind of a, an interesting question. Um, so what other things would you think would be interesting that you want to look at? Does this make you all nervous that you all got scanned really hard? <laughs> So I found that too. So then I tried to look for the sheep. The sheep being, so this is the count of all the, so for each person, how many times did they sign an adversarial key, right? So uh, the way to think about this is if one person signed, has eight signatures from their real key on adversarial keys, then this person would just sign in everything that anybody sent them. Uh, so it's actually a really nice, uh, much better distribution than I thought, so good job on everyone else. Uh, the max anyone got scanned was signed four adversarial keys, so think about that, like four out of 20 <coughs> keys that you signed, that's actually pretty, uh, that's a legit, legit number. And then, let's see, it goes to about, yeah. so yeah, you can see that like, well, 30 people signed, but some of them only a few, right? And so, like 35. 40. So obviously it goes out to 40 because one person got 40 people to sign their keys, right? Um, so 45, I don't know, we still get into there. Wow. All right, 30, wow, that's cool, 60. So uh, actually, and then that's pretty, I don't know, how do you feel about that? That's like 50% of the class like got scanned, but only got scanned by one person, right? So that's actually pretty good. So. Uh, you guys did a good job in, maybe it was, I don't know, too hard to sign adversarial keys, or I'm not sure what the, I was expecting this to be higher, to be honest, but, so I'm happy that it wasn't, yeah. It, it, 
I think it'd be really interesting to know, but I don't know that we the the, the data would be stored. But the time that like the, the fake keys were signed, you know, like then you'd find the, were those forty six. The person that got forty keys was that evenly distributed throughout the whole thing, or was it like at the very last moment that becomes fun data? Yeah, the problem is that it's tied in with all of your grades, so I don't think I can release like the because I have a an archive here now of a key ring with everyone's signatures and public keys and adversarial keys in there. <laughs> So you could probably run that analysis, but then I think that would leak too much. I think that would be considered like great data. I'm not sure how that works. I don't think I could probably do that. But I can, if you come up with an interesting thing, you can send it to me. Maybe I'll do it, but don't hold my breath. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, the other thing that was interesting. So this is scan. Um, ah, yeah, number acquired. So this was an interesting one. So this was the number of, I think, any type of signature is real or adversarial on a real key. So this was interesting that the top 10 people had like 55 real signatures on their key, right? And this again does not include your own keys and does not your real and adversarial key and it also doesn't include the course signature. So these are just, so these people, one person got 55 other people in the class, either adversarial or not to send their key, yeah. Why not just you sign your own key with your own adversarial key? Yeah, it's not counted. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It'd be a good try, but. Cool. Any other questions on this? So, I think the grading of this will be pretty easy. I think everyone got most of the stuff done. So, um, And there wasn't a lot of adversarial scamming, so don't freak out about that. Yeah? What was the method that the person that had 40 years? I don't even know who it is, so I don't know. If anybody would like to help themselves and tell us. Are you talking about um, total number of signatures required, or are you talking about the I was scans? talking about adversarial. I know the 55 is me <laughs> for valid signatures. But I was, yeah. When you submit it, it tells you how many you get. Mm -hmm. And then it just said for me, like, 48,000 signatures. Is that that one? E possible. I don't know. I probably shouldn't confirm that. So uh, <laughs> Actually, I don't think this has anything to do with the grade. And I don't even know how this maps anything else. So it's not like that person is the same as Yeah, so how did you get that many people to sign? How did you get that many signatures on your key? Well, I just posted it in the post that Eric posted. But the weird thing was, I didn't even include my ID. I just mm -hmm. included my profile on ASU, which had my picture, which I thought was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. So people maybe searched for you then and yeah. like started Well, I, I linked it in there. Okay, interesting. I was talking about that for certain people. Yeah, so if, if, if anybody in the, or thinks they're in the top would like to tell us their method, that's totally fine. If you want to keep it secret, that's also fine. If you want to send an email to me detailing your method, and I can send it out anonymously to the class so nobody knows that it was actually you that did that. So I, my adversarial key, I removed the user from it that mm -hmm. was given by the system, and then I signed it with a fake CSE. Oh, so what does that do then to your key? So it resets it, so it causes the signature to no longer be there that was signed by CSE 340, admin. 465. 465. Yes. One of those classes. Um, so I created a fake one and started signing different people's keys with the fake one as well so that everybody would recognize it and got it out to the repository. And then submitted mine on the last like three days with several signatures that were faked from other people to give it more legitimacy. Mm, so you, wait, you created other fake people to sign yeah. your key and then put it on the key signing server? Yeah. <coughs> just giving weight to that key. I think if I had, nice. I think if I had um, created the same one, which was a valid person at ASU in the computer science program, <coughs> and created an email and posted to the mailing list, then I would have definitely gotten a lot more. Interesting. Yeah, that's a. Oh yeah. So that was actually something from reading through. Maybe I don't know if I mentioned this, but reading through the the reports of the, some of the people who did this adversarial stuff. Um, I actually did not realize you could do this, but on GPG, the UID is just a field that's associated with the key, right? So even though we generated a public-private key pair for you with a randomly generated name, uh, you could actually delete that UID, but what that would do would remove the course's signature. So in a perfect world, if everybody's 100% vigilant, they would never sign that key 
because it's not signed by the course server. And that may have been some of the chatter on the mailing list of people saying like, hey, your, your key is not signed by the course server, I'm not gonna sign it until it's, it's on there, right? Um, so that was super interesting. So then they had the way around that is you create your own UID with whatever you want and then create a fake CSE 465 key, have it sign that UID, and then if people aren't actually checking that the fingerprint matches, then they're gonna, if they're lazy, they're gonna sign it. Yeah, because I saw my key got signed like six times by CSE 465. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's a good tip off. Okay. I, I did come in a couple minutes late, but is there a way that we can determine right now how many times our adversarial key was signed? That's this. So not you yet, but this is a overall. So this is of all the people who got valid signatures on their key sorted by greatest to least. So I actually don't even know who these people are yet. Uh, this is just kind of like the raw data I've been playing with this morning. And I showed this graph that you'll see in the video that shows my computer look like. Um, so yeah, so the, like, the top most adversarial person got 40 signatures on their real peoples. So obviously we take that, subtract out all the signatures on your adversarial key that was from other adversarial keys. So it's only other real users who signed you, the key. And so it's like, yeah, so this is the distribution there. Oops. And then the flip side of that is, we'll do top 20. So these were the top 20, top 20 people that got scammed, so that signed an adversarial key with their real key. It's actually surprisingly a, a long tail, but also not very, like it's not like one person fell for all eight scams or something like that, so it's pretty interesting. That's hilarious. 